It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Danelle Langeneckert from St. Ambrose and her Fighting Bees Spirit Squads pulled off an impressive event, more than impressive coaches. You all won not one, but two national championships in the same day. Winners in 2023, the NAIA cheer and dance competitions. Let's start right there. Congratulations, coach. I know it's uh, it's been a big day and, and a couple of weeks to follow. You've had a little time to think about it now. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it doesn't seem like we've stopped, but thank you. And I appreciate you having me today. Well, Coach, let's start with cheer then. I know that you uh, oversee both of the programs as, as you have been the dance coach for a number of years but became the spirit squad coach overall about six years ago and working with cheer as well. The first national championship, NAI national championship for St. Ambrose, and doing so in fine fashion, you scored a 95.51, a championship record. So let's talk about the cheer first. Yeah, I, I can tell you that um... – this team in particular was very hungry to win a national championship. They've been very close um, the last few years. And, um, and I think, I think this is, this was the year to do it. I, I, nothing was going to stop them ever since the end of last year's nationals. They've, yes. they've been out for it. So this was, um, this was a great group of individuals. This was the hardest routine we've ever put together um, but as you, as you probably know, uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than just talent. I mean, we've had the talent before, but we also had great chemistry this year. We had, um, just some, just some amazing willpower, motivation, um, energy, just a lot of all of that just really going for us and that made them un unstoppable. Which I had a chance to to actually see the routine at the the Midwest Regional, and uh, talk about an impressive routine. It was that, and both times the prelims and the final as well. Not only seeing a routine as impressive as that was, but watching them nail it over and over again. And I know that they did that at the the national championship as well. Uh, talk about what goes into putting a routine like that out there, and as you said, the hunger to make it uh, make it happen and see it get done. Yeah, I mean, for us, um, we were just waiting to be able to hit that routine. Um, it seemed that up until I think it was like the week of regionals, they hadn't actually hit that routine all the way through. And it would never be the same thing. It would always be just something in this area or this stunt or, you know, um, one little thing. Um, every single time. And it wasn't a consistent thing. So it wasn't like it was making my job easy. I could just take the stunt out or something like that. It was just always something. We just weren't hitting it. And then I don't know what happened, but well, I can tell you what happened. We just didn't give up. And we did, there was one practice we had where I think we did maybe 12 full outs. And, um, and then just we turned a corner. And at that point, Every single time they did that routine, they were hitting it. And then it was just fun. Like they, they were having fun doing it. And I think you, maybe you, you may, might have experienced this. I don't know. But even just watching the routine, they were entertaining. And you could tell they were having fun. And it was – it just made it, it – it made it crowd appealing and then also appealing to the judges from a technical standpoint, difficulty level. Um, so it just had all the elements – for a championship routine. Coach, I agree with you. I, I think that you, you said it right. Appealing, entertaining. From my perspective, I don't, I don't think the crowd took their eyes off your team from the moment the music started until it came to an end. And then afterward to, to watch them celebrate and know that they nailed it. And, and it was a, a big deal. We're speaking now with Danelle Langeneckert from St. Ambrose, whose cheer team won a national championship, but the dance team won as well. And we're doing this here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you to please continue to enjoy the videos here. We love talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, Ypsilanti, Michigan. I know that uh, you've been there before, but uh, you're going to remember it well because not only the cheer championship, but the dance as well. And again, winning that in record style. 93.40 for the dance team, another championship record. And it was the third championship for the dance team. But talk about 23's model. Well, um, I can I can honestly tell you that the dance team, I, we go through this every year, um, 
they, it's like they walk into the season with um, pressure on their shoulders, not pressure from anybody else, but just pressure that they put there themselves based on how they typically do every year. I mean, um, they're always, they always put out a good product and they, they do fairly decent, um, you know, every year, knock on wood, but um, <laughs> that's pressure for those athletes to come in. And, you know, if we don't get one or two, we might be the worst dance team that St. Ambrose has seen in a very long time, you know, and that's, that's a lot for, um, you know, an 18 to 22 year old to, to take in. And every year, our goal is to step it up from the year before, you know, so they're taking on um, the most difficult routine every year that the St. Ambrose dance team has ever done, you know, and then this enormous amount of pressure that they, they put on their back. So we, we have to do a lot of kind of talking them down a little bit like, hey, we're just going to get out there. We're going to do the best that we can. Don't think about how you're going to place. Don't think about qualifying for this or, you know, winning that or whatever. Let's just try to hit this routine. Um, you know, so we had a lot of that going on um, and they did. They they put out the most difficult routine that our dance team has ever done. Um both cheer and dance, really. So we're, we're very, very proud of that. Um, but it took a lot to get there, you know. Um, physically, I think um, we were in shape and we were able to, to, to do the routine. We maybe battled with a few injuries here and there. But, um, you know, I would say more the mental side of it, you know, with dance. Um, just being able, I mean, and you know your daughter dance, so they have certain skills in the routine, and and that's a, you get two minutes, and you have to hit everything, you know. And if you don't hit um, a particular skill in the NAI, that's a deduction, and that's a deduction that your whole team got because you fell out of something or you put your foot down in a turn, and you know. So um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of preparation on the mental side as well. I mentioned third national championship. And it's the third time in six years that you've done that, winning in 2018 and 2021 as well. So perspective on this now, obviously it's a championship program, and that's something that I know means a lot to you, I'm sure to, to all of the players, to the university and the athletic department too. Talk about winning three in six years. It's a humbling feeling. I mean, uh, truly every year all the teams take a huge step up and i think the naia is becoming so competitive more competitive every single year um all the teams are just so impressive so it's humbling you know and you walk into the competition and um and you just you see a lot of good teams and a, a lot of deserving teams and coming out of some really great in seasons and um it never gets easy. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, coach, you, you did so with a, a number of upperclassmen then in both of these squads. And, and you had uh, quite a few of those on the, on the roster for cheer and for dance as well. Can you talk about some of those upperclassmen then and what it means to send those dancers and, and uh, athletes out uh, with uh, a national championship? Uh, well, I think, um, on on both sides, you know, it's um, I don't know how to put this. It's it's uh, it's bittersweet, you know. Um, it they've they've had amazing seasons here at St. Ambrose, and you know, this senior class, um, all those athletes have really laid some great foundation. Um, in both programs, both cheer and dance, and and really a legacy for other cheerleaders and dancers to come in and follow. And, um, you know, so it's bittersweet. Yeah, I think for the most part, I think they're probably re re physically ready to graduate <laughs> and, you know, um, be done. But I think that they've definitely got some great memories and, you know, it's going to be hard to leave and hopefully we'll just have some amazing alumni that come back and support us. And, you know, but even as a, as a coach, you know, it's, it's so hard to say goodbye to that senior class. Cause 
I'll probably cry. So <laughs> that's okay. That that's all right. But yeah, no, they um they definitely put in the work and and it was just so cool to like celebrate it together because we talk we always talk about how we're one big family, both teams together. And um I don't know if you got a chance to see the championship, but it was really cool to see how they supported each other. And, you know, as soon as they received both teams, as soon as they received the banner and had a moment to celebrate, the other team was running down out of the, the, the stands wanting to jump and cheer with them too. So it's like um, they each won their own championship, but they also won the championship with their brothers and sisters, you know? So that was kind of cool to see. Coach, uh, what an, an incredible experience tonight. I'm sure that you all enjoyed it. And again, you talk about the memories that are made. I, I want to follow up then on something that you said as, as we wrap up our time. It's off season. Is there ever really an off season? Uh, and I would, you, you talked about that you want to be better the next year than the year before, always doing something to improve. It's really going to be kind of tough to improve on, on this particular result in, in winning both of them. Uh, what's the off season like? And, and then let me ask you, are you already developing the routines for next year or are you taking a mental break or, or can you even do that? Yeah, uh, no, we don't really start anything with the routines until um, the fall. So, um, you know, technically we can't really do anything until after September 1st. Um, but we, we do give them good guidelines, um, you know, especially after tryouts and stuff like that, guidelines of what it is that we're looking for on those competitive teams, um, you know, a good uh, – guidelines to follow in terms of like strength and conditioning um, so that they're prepared and ready to come back uh, in the fall. Um, I think that's one thing. Uh, I love our strength and conditioning program. Uh, we really work to prepare our athletes for the type of routine that we're asking them to do. Um, you know, so we have those off season uh, workouts that they can follow. Obviously it's nothing that, uh, we're tying them to. I mean, it's their decision. Um, but we give them guidelines and then, you know, when they come back, we, we kind of work through strategically in a three phased approach to, um, to that, to that national. So, um, so, you know, between strength and conditioning and, you know, doing, uh, giving them some guidelines on skills checks and things like that, that they can be working on um, over those summer months. But again, it's really up to the athlete, you know, what, what they want to do over those summer months. But that's kind of our off season, you know, right now um, as a coaching staff, we're, we're focusing on uh, still some recruitment initiatives and um, working on tryouts and kind of preparing for the next year's season from an administrative level, but, um, you know, there's really not too much that we do with the athletes until we've got them back here in the fall. Well, coach, I'm sure there's not any better of a recruiting tool than to be able to point to a couple of red banners and uh, have the trophies to go with that and say, Hey, listen, you, you have an opportunity to compete for a national championship when you come to Davenport. It's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing. Well, congratulations again, coach Danelle Langeneckert from St. Ambrose, the fighting bees, Cheer and Dance, both national champions in 2023, doing so again, scoring record marks. Congratulations, Coach, and thank you so much again for taking time with us here on the Summit. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.